Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know, I know talking boxing gets people's blood boiling. It's a very passionate subject, especially when you're talking about all-time greats. I'm not kidding when I say for several years growing up, I knew the quickest way to get kicked out of my house growing up was saying anything critical of Joe Lewis, right? My dad loved Joe Lewis, and um, his word was the law of the land, at least in our household, right? You couldn't talk about Lewis's foot speed. You couldn't talk about Lewis's losses, right? We keep hearing about that second Max Schmeling fight. What about the first one, right? You really couldn't talk about Lewis's level of competition, right? At one point, Lewis went through what was called by the press at the time a bum of the month club, right? And you certainly couldn't talk about the fact that a lot of guys who would have been fighters were out at war, right? And, you know, the sport of boxing really had a little bit of a talent shortfall there in the uh, 40s, didn't it? Well, let's not be that way. Let's actually boldly go wherever the tape takes us. One of history's most popular fighters, one of the few fighters in history who has lived the kind of popularity that Manny Pacquiao has right now, is Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali loves Manny Pacquiao. Muhammad Ali is picking Manny Pacquiao over Floyd Mayweather, right? That story broke, apparently, uh, one of Ali's daughters uh, revealed Ali's preference to the media. And understand, when we talk about Ali and when we talk about Pacquiao, we're talking about guys who were loved, right? Not just in their backyard, but worldwide, right? These are the kind of guys who can travel places and the fans love them, right? Now let's talk about why Ali, who called himself the greatest, might not fully be in love with the man who calls himself the best ever, right? Um, even across different generations in boxing, you have a lot of unity and, you know, timeless themes. Now let me say this. You know, growing up, Ali was one of my very favorite fighters. Ali has a certain cultural status, right? That's deserved. You're talking about a guy who got stripped of the title for political reasons. You're talking about a guy who then went and toured. He was talking to college campuses, I'm not kidding, about his stand against the Vietnam War, right? You're talking about a guy who, in his prime, was one of the very best, if not the best, heavyweight champion in history. And then he got that taken away from him, right? I would argue when he comes back to the sport in the 1970s, his legs are not the same. They never return. If I'm looking for the best Ali, the Ali who beats every other Ali, I would encourage you to look at the tape of Ali against Cleveland Williams. Right? That Ali is faster than any heavyweight I've seen. That Ali is moving around the ring and there's a fearlessness to it, right? Keep in mind, um, Williams was one of the biggest hitters of the 1970s, excuse me, 1960s. The fight's in Texas. It's in Houston. You have 30,000 or so people at the fight. I believe the fight's 
at some mecca like the Astrodome or something. And Ali takes him apart, takes him out. Ali looks like an artist, right? It's hard to believe he's a heavyweight. He moves like a middleweight. The hand speed is astonishing, right? There's a certain playfulness with him. He looks like a fun guy to be around. He's not just a craftsman. He's a guy who looks like he's having fun doing his craft, right? I'll agree for those of you who believe in his greatness, right? That just style-wise, I think that Ali beats the very best Lennox Lewis. I don't see how Lennox Lewis could move around the ring with him. I think that Ali beats Joe Lewis. Right? By the way, my dad also loved Ali. Right? My dad loved Ali. Um, but I believe that Ali beats Joe Lewis. Joe Lewis simply didn't have the foot speed to keep up with Muhammad Ali. Right? Understand, too, that Ali had charisma, right? Always pay attention to the charisma gap. You see Ali against a guy like Cleveland Williams, right, in Williams' backyard, and you understand that it's Ali who has the crowd giggling, right? It's Ali who has your attention as he's moving around the ring. You want to know what he's thinking, not what Williams is thinking, right? I believe that Ali beats Vitaly Klitschko. There again, Ali's taller than you realize, right? And Ali just moves too well for Vitaly. And I consider Lewis and Vitaly to be all-time greats, right? That Ali, the Ali from the 60s, I believe beats George Foreman and wouldn't have to rope a dope to do it. I think he's just too fluid. He beat Foreman's idol, the guy who taught Foreman how to jab, Sonny Liston. I believe the fight would be like that. But, and there is a but, there are holes in Ali's game, aren't there? You can be a great fighter, a great fighter, one of the best in history, and by that I mean all the great fighters in your weight class. If we had a round robin, where would you place? I believe Ali would be at the top or near the top, right? I think he would be too fast and too fluid and too charismatic for many of the big heavyweights out there. But when you look at Ali's style, he has the same problem. That the most dominant fighter I actually got a chance to watch as it happened over a stretch of time had, Roy Jones Jr., right? Ali is a great athlete, right? But some of his technical skills aren't as elite as his athleticism, right? So, and I know you have a lot of people who love Ali. Trust me, I love Ali too. But if we're going to analyze boxing, let's at least try to be frank. So with regard to Ali, in my opinion, right, Ali didn't age well. The Ali you see in the 1960s, right, has legs that he doesn't have in the 70s, right? He doesn't have the defense, right, the defensive skills that a fighter who didn't rely on his legs would have, right? Ali, dare I say, isn't as good defensively as Floyd Mayweather, right? He's not. You know, at one time, clearly you couldn't lay a glove on Ali, right? Both Sonny Liston fights, right? Ali is leaning back, 
right? Listen to throwing punches. Ali's leaning back. He's relying on reflexes. That's his technique for certain things. Now it works until you get to your late 20s and the reflexes dim a little bit. Now while Mayweather can do pull counters and stuff like that, and while he's a master at, you know, dodging punches and stuff like that, I would say that if a Mike Tyson, and let's just pretend they're all the same weight class, if a Mike Tyson fought Ali, and that's the heavyweight fight style-wise that we could talk about forever and not have a clear answer. But if Tyson, circa 1988, fights the Ali who destroys Cleveland Williams, the Ali who beats up on Zora Fali, I think there's an open question on how Ali would deal with Mike Tyson coming inside. Because we know that Ali do doesn't have or didn't have an active defense. What's his technique to beat Joe Fraser in the second fight? And that's the fight people need to look at. Fraser gets inside on Ali, and Ali just pushes down on the back of his neck and clinches him. Right? Ali's a clincher like Vladimir Klitschko. Right? My point to you is if Mike Tyson bum rushed Floyd Mayweather, he'd run into the same elbows. He'd run into the same problems that Victor Ortiz did and that Ricky Hatton did. Right? Mayweather has a defensive construct that Ali didn't have, right? Mayweather's turned to the side. He has a shoulder out. You throw on him. He has his body protected. He has his head tucked. You're hitting his shoulder, right? Mayweather's defense is brilliant compared to Ali's defense. Mayweather doesn't have to be up on his toes moving away from you all the time. One of the fights I hope I see when I get to heaven is Prime Ali, Prime Tyson, because I'm not sure who wins that fight. Let me just give a little history. I used to talk about this in the 1980s when Tyson was on top. Back then we had things called VCRs. After Buster Douglas beat Tyson, <laughs> my dad, of course, mailed me the VCR cassette of Buster Douglas beating Mike Tyson. The first conversation he and I had after that, he said to me simply, Buster Douglas has a jab. It's nice, but it's not Ali's jab, right? I understand there are those who believe Mike Tyson, Joe Fraser, what's the difference? Ali tamed Joe Fraser. Did he really? That first fight's not close. Fraser wins that fight by a wide margin. Right? The second fight, take away the clinching, where does that leave you? We now know the clinching's illegal. Because the referee before the third fight, the thriller in Manila, Carlos Padilla tells Ali, I'm not going to allow that kind of clinching. And let me point out that Joe Fraser comes on gangbusters in that fight. The thriller Manila is one of the best fights in boxing history. I would argue that over three fights... You have to search hard for the stretches in which Ali dominates Joe Fraser. Let's also remember Mike Tyson, even today, has two good eyes. Joe Fraser, we now know from history, was blind in one eye. That's why Jack Kent Cook, the owner of the Fabulous Forum, when he signed up to have the guys fight their first fight, had to move the fight to Madison Square Garden because he feared Joe Fraser would not be able to get a license to fight in the state of California. Right? Let's also remember, too, Joe Fraser's spectacular left hook. No question about it. If you revisit the early rounds, the first two rounds, literally, 
of Fraser's first fight against Ali, you're going to see Fraser trying to end that fight early with the left hook. He throws several of them. Understand Mike Tyson threw hard with both hands. I understand Tyson didn't last that long at the top. I'm just telling you when Tyson was at the top, you really have to ask yourself whether anybody in boxing history as a heavyweight could have beaten him. Right? Well, let me just say, Ali, as we saw from the second Fraser fight, as we saw from the first Fraser fight, Ali can't fight small. Right? You get inside, he tries to grab you. He can't bend down, right, and literally duke it out with you and shrink like Floyd Mayweather does. Right? He really can't. Mayweather fights small better than Ali did. Right? Ali fought tall. You threw on him, he would lean. Right? That was, you know, that's an Ali thing. He could lean, then he could come back with punches and stuff like that. But he wasn't the kind of guy, if you got inside, who would then go small and trade with you. Mayweather is. Right? Let me say, too, Ali had a problem playing the lead. Right? He wanted you to come after him. He wanted to counter you. Look at the Jimmy Young fight. That's one of the most important fights I know of. Right? Jimmy Young forces Ali to take the lead. Ali can't. The action stops. Ali literally pleads with Jimmy Young to come find him, to come fight him, because Ali didn't want to take the lead. Right? Floyd Mayweather, in my opinion, is a switch. Right? Not to get too S&M on anybody here, but understand, Mayweather's a great counterpuncher. But when Mayweather senses that he has you dead on the train tracks, he can step on the gas and finish you. If we're looking for a vintage Floyd Mayweather film, Mayweather at his best, where it is all working. I want people to go back and look at Mayweather against an unbeaten Diego Corrales. Right? Understand that fight has one of the most special moments in boxing. After Mayweather knocks down Corrales something like five times, Corrales's father, I'm not kidding, from the corner, throws in the towel, ending his son's unbeaten streak. That's how dominant Mayweather was. So, I'll say this. Ali was a great fighter. The Ali against Cleveland Williams might be the best heavyweight to ever step in the square ring. Right? He's dominant. But he's relying on physical gifts, just like Roy Jones. Relied on hand speed and a great left hook and reflexes and faints when he was younger, right? As Ali aged, understand he aged a lot faster than Floyd Mayweather, right? Ali's in his 20s and you notice his legs are gone, right? You notice it. Understand how it ends for Ali. Forget the Burbeck fight. Forget the Larry Holmes fight. I want you to go back to the first Leon Spinks fight. Folks, Leon Spinks shouldn't have been in the ring with the reigning heavyweight champion. Right? I don't want to hear about the Olympics. This is pro fighting. Leon Spinks was small for a heavyweight. Small for a heavyweight. And he wasn't Rocky Marciano. He wasn't Mike Tyson. Right? He didn't have that kind of power. He didn't have that kind of talent. Right? Understand, Leon Spinks really, simply put, was one of the worst heavyweight champions in history. I'll even go further. He's one of the worst 
heavyweight contenders to challenge for a title in history. You're talking about a guy who beat next to nobody in something like seven fights getting a crack at Muhammad Ali. And he beat Ali. The tank was empty fan. Right? The public loved Ali. They overlooked Ali's shortcomings. Right? Ali tries to goes up, go up on his toes. He couldn't maintain it. Leon Spinks gets inside on him. Ali didn't know what to do. Right? Dare I say, I don't believe Floyd Mayweather has fought anyone as bad as Leon Spinks since his early, early fights. Let's remember, Mayweather gets the title early against an excellent champion, Genero Hernandez. Right? Whose funeral, by the way, later, when Hernandez had health problems, Mayweather quietly paid for. Right? Floyd does a lot of things outside the ring. My point to you is simply, the Roy Jones, Ali, even Mike Tyson type fighter, who's getting by on reflexes and not developed skills that they have crafted over the years of their career, they tend to have shorter peaks than the Floyd Mayweathers, right? When I'm thinking of Mayweather, the guys I would compare him to historically, right, dream matchups, would be Mayweather against Sugar Ray Robinson, right? Robinson had spectacular skills. Robinson's a better offensive fighter than Mayweather. I consider Mayweather to be a better defensive fighter than Ray Robinson, right? Roger Mayweather, who trained Floyd for years, feels that Ray Robinson's the best fighter to ever live. Right? I think his nephew makes that an open question. I think that'd be a great fight. Another opponent, a guy who I thought was on the verge of redefining the sport, would be Salvador Sanchez. He died way too soon. From time to time, I look at the Danny Little Red Lopez fights that Sanchez had. Those are masterpieces. Right? His fight against Wilfredo Gomez... Gomez, KO artist, has him up on the ropes. Somebody gets knocked down. I won't spoil it. I want you to go see it. See a master at work doing his craft. Right? Ali, I'll just say this. Great heavyweight. Right? But didn't go to the body. Look at the Ali films. Tell me the fight where Ali is doing great work to the body. Right? Floyd Mayweather, quietly, is one of the best body punchers in the sport. His left hook to the body is one of the best punches out there. Look at the Canelo fight. Floyd's throwing jabs to the body. In fact, look at the Marcus Maidana rematch. Right? Here's big bad Marcus Maidana. People demanded a rematch. The rematch comes there in the middle of the ring. Floyd Mayweather is teaching class. Right? He's hitting him to the body. He's taking away his body in the middle of the ring. It's not a contest. It's only when they're at the side of the ring and the referee's allowing elbows and low blows that Maidana makes it a bit of a tussle. Right? In terms of body punching, it's not close. Right? Ali didn't go to the body. Floyd Mayweather does. On a level that few can right now. So, let me say this. I'll agree Ali at his best, like Roy Jones at his best, was one of the best fighters to ever live. It's hard for me to take a slow-footed guy against him, right? The hand speed is simply too blinding, right? The charisma is simply all-encompassing, right? The, the feet are just too stellar, right? The whole package is there. 
But that's a young man's game, isn't it? Right? Ali's at his best at 24, 25, right? 22, 23, just like Tyson is at his best around that age range. Right? These guys didn't have the kind of developed skills, in my opinion, to take it to where the Mayweathers have taken it in their 30s. Right? Because the problem is you're only able to just lean back and dodge shots. Fight Sonny Liston and just go like this and have the shot fly by you for so long. Right? Your feet are only dominant. Your foot speed is only dominant for so long. Then the holes start to show. So, let's segue to Manny Pacquiao. Doesn't Pacquiao have holes in his game? Younger Pacquiao, like Ali, the hand speed is dazzling, right? Younger Pacquiao, hard to find. You can't figure him out. You don't know him. You don't know where he's going to be. You don't know what he's going to do. Now we have mid-30s Pacquiao. Guys like Marquez have figured out where he's going to be to the point where they could counter him, to the point where they could knock him down multiple times in a fight. Right? Aren't you a little concerned that Pacquiao might not be able to fight that well on his back foot? Aren't you a little concerned that there are fights like the Joshua Clotty fight I mentioned in an earlier video where Pacquiao is getting hit with uppercuts and doesn't really make the adjustment? Right? Aren't you concerned that Marquez is taking Floyd Mayweather in this fight. Marquez, unlike Ali, who's actually been in the ring with both guys, right? aren't you concerned that Marquez knew exactly where Manny Pacquiao was going to be when he knocked out Manny Pacquiao? Aren't you concerned, too, that in the Marquez series, Marquez is most at risk early in the first fight. Once he adjusts to the speed... By the third fight, even many in the crowd feel he's won the fight. The fourth fight, he leaves no doubt. Right? Isn't Pacquiao a guy who has a young style? Right? Explosive straight right hand from distance, hand speed, foot speed, right? Placeholder jab. Isn't he a guy whose game hasn't matured? Right? Isn't the problem with Ali and Roy Jones Jr. the fact that they were at their best very early in their careers. And as they got older and as their physical gifts started to dim, their games didn't mature. Isn't the Floyd Mayweather you're seeing now a guy who has a vastly better inside game than the one who fought Castillo? Right? Isn't the Mayweather that you're seeing now a guy who really seems to be fine-tuning skills, right? Doesn't even, even though he has hand speed, doesn't even have to really flash the hand speed. Just seems to systematically take over fights, even against guys with hand speed like Shane Mosley, to the point where by the time you get to round eight, you're thinking, wow, Mayweather's opponent, who had moments early, needs a KO to win this fight. How many rounds did it take you? To realize that Saul Alvarez did not belong in the ring with Floyd Mayweather. So I'll say this. I love both Ali and Mayweather. I do. And I love Manny Pacquiao. I know that surprises many people. And I love Roy Jones Jr. I still maintain that Roy Jones went on a run in the 1990s that I haven't seen duplicated. Right? But when I look at Ali... When I look at Jones, when I look at Pacquiao, I see guys who were at their most dominant in their 20s. I can't say that about Mayweather. I'll agree, Mayweather's legs are not what they once were. But Mayweather has a skill set where he can fight in slow motion. He has a skill set where he can be leaning on the ropes with Miguel Cotto in front of him. And he's still in control of the fight. Right? Could Mayweather possibly have looked more calm and more in control 
than he did against Victor Ortiz. How many rounds did you give Miguel Cotto? Four? In a 12-round fight? Right? So, I'm looking forward to Mayweather Pacquiao. I do feel that Ali, Roy Jones, Pacquiao, they're different kinds of fighters than Mayweather. I believe they relied more on their physical gifts. And I believe Mayweather, even though he's physically gifted, actually is relying more on his chess play. I would argue Mayweather is closer to Bernard Hopkins than he is Roy Jones Jr. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Let me finally add to that I understand there are other big heavyweights out there that people love and who believe are all-time greats, right? Mike Tyson, for example, wore black trunks because of one of his idols, Jack Dempsey, right? Tyson's a big believer in Jack Dempsey, right? I know Lou Duva, you know, very active in boxing, believes that nobody touches Rocky Marciano. And I know Archie Moore went to his grave, calling Marciano a great fighter, and Archie Moore himself, of course, was a great fighter, right? For those who may have forgotten, Archie Moore actually dropped Rocky Marciano when they fought before getting stopped by Rocky Marciano, right? Let's not have emotions run too hot where we can't break down and analyze the tape. Let me hear from you. I hope you do so right now and leave your thoughts in the comment section to this video. Right? I think Ali, and don't get me wrong, he beats Foreman in 74 in his 30s. Right? My point, though, is Ali is more of a freak athlete like Roy Jones than he is a craftsman who peaks in his 30s like Floyd Mayweather. That's how I see it. Let me hear how you see it. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.